Tell us about the anti-sex cult. I don't oh my know. Gosh. Did we talk about this last time and I'm just forgetting? Possibly. Oh gosh, we covered so much, but um, probably not. Um, so when, so this was way before I got into the industry. Um, I was involved in a multi-lover marketing company. Ooh, okay. Yeah, an MLM, but like it's not, it wasn't just any old MLM. Selling what? Um, it was Amway. It, like, I don't oh. know if you've heard of Amway, but they sold like all kinds of random products that are in your house, like laundry detergent, yeah, yeah, yeah. water, And uh, you have to get drinks. people, for people who don't know about multi-level marketing, you have to go and get clients, sell them stuff, and then you get a percentage of the sales, but then the person who signed you up also gets a percentage of your sales and the other person. So basically the people at the top make a lot of money, the people at the bottom essentially make none yeah some people will call it a pyramid scheme or a pyramid like thing but it's also um the particular um company i was with was heavier on recruiting so it wasn't just selling it was also trying to get other people to like the way that they pitched it to us was like oh you basically open up your own like target store and you buy from yourself and then you get other people to open up their own like target or walmart and like buy wholesale from themselves Mm -hmm. right so i got involved with it because of my brother, my older brother, who, bless his heart, didn't know any better. We just saw the money. We saw, like, private planes and jets and nice cars and the houses and all that, mansions. And um, I was in my last year of undergrad at the time. So I ended up dropping out for this organization because I just saw dollar I saw dollar bills, dollar signs. And I, I saw, like, be retired by 25. I'm way past 25 now at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. But I was like, about marketing to people to work for them is crazy. No. Yeah. So I ended up dropping out of um, – undergrad I, I moved to seattle because that's where my coaches were at um, based out of seattle washington i moved there um and didn't really have an idea of how conservative um my coaches called upline were my mentors like the people that sponsored me that's what they're called is like your upline or your mentors so um when i initially got involved i went down to a conference down in fort lauderdale with my brother where it was a weekend little conference where other people are talking all day about their like life success story. Like here's how he- Amway helped me. And it was really, it was really fucking boring. The really whole, lame. whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh. And uh, the Sunday culminate, it kind of culminated in this like Sunday worship service, a church thing, which was quote unquote optional, which it literally wasn't. You just had to go. So my brother and I were not, we didn't grow up religious. We're um, Peruvian and Scottish. We're like Latino. So. And you had no idea that this multi-level marketing thing also had this whole religious Giant component. Christian, horrible, like fundamentalist, like very wow. big lean. Neither, neither did my brother. So we go to this event. We get like saved, quote unquote, like, which is like, oh, like you basically like commit yourself, your life to God again, or, or you commit your life to God or whatever. Right. <laughs> You're oh like crazy so bad. Yeah. So I did that and I was like, okay, this is neat. Like I'm close to my brother again. We kind of like weren't that close anymore at that time. So I'm like, this is a great way to kind of spend time with my brother. And my brother was always very business savvy, always um, kind of a hidden entrepreneur, but never really realized his potential until like, I guess that moment. So I'm, you know, fast forward like a year, I moved, to, I gave up on college, moved to Seattle and my coaches were so conservative. They literally thought like yoga was like something the devil made up. Didn't want me let me wear yoga pants. They had me... Um, commit to being like a born again virgin, um, and within this organization, you your media was limited. You couldn't, you weren't allowed to watch any sort of like TV unless it was like something that was like rec- in a recommended list. Mm. Crazy, like it was very much like brain. This is how you literally brainwash people. But you had your phone. Yeah, I had my phone. Yeah, they so couldn't it's not access. Okay. No, no, but like. They still just try to like tell you, encourage you very strongly. All because they wanted you to sell their like soap and shit. Literally. No, but I think they want to get you on board with God. Or did you? Did it feel like the whole point of the thing was to get you into God, or was the the God thing to control you mentally? Both, and to control me, and to like control my finances, because they would write Mm -hmm. a budget out for me. Like I had to read a certain amount of time from a book from the book list every day. I had to listen to an audio tape like every day. Mm. So very much like try to like primed me to like being like all about this organization to make them as much money as possible right and to find people who thought just like me uh-huh. and they pit part like they specifically pick out the people that are the most vulnerable like i wasn't making much money i was in college like i was li- living with my parents like i didn't make shit yeah. how long do you think you were like under their spell um a little less than a year okay. yeah but once oh. i moved to seattle's when i was like oh this is kind of weird like my coaches are kind of like not it so i was a born again virgin i broke up with like my college boyfriend at the time yeah, because I'm like, he wasn't, he didn't want to do it. I think he saw right through the bullshit, but he's like, oh, well, just let Cammy figure it out. <laughs> wow. wow. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah I, I uh, sold knives for Cutco for a huge a, one. Yeah. That's yeah, a big one in uh, high college. school for a couple months. Yeah. And, you know, the, uh, the, the, the big guy at the company at the office that I was working out of had 
I think the same car that Michael Scott ended up having <laughs> on The Office, which it, it was a Sebring, I think. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. He's all proud of it and shit. And then, like, I remember the 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 dude who was in charge of my office saying, like, you see that car outside? You think I got that car by just chilling and relaxing? Oh, yeah, no, he's like, I got Drink that big, by baby. grinding and selling <laughs> knives. These knives were amazing, but they're also super expensive. <laughs> I've heard they're really good, actually. I remember yeah. those. Well, because I, I sold my parents some, and they still had them 15 years later. <laughs> Your so. parents they're good for stuff. something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey. If, but that was what they would tell you: is like, hey, yeah, maybe a normal knife is 10% of the price of our knives, but our knives are going to last 20 times as long, so it's actually cheaper. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, that was the same thing as this company. Like, oh, they sold vitamins. Like, oh, our vitamins are better because this. It's like, it's all literally bullshit. And whether yeah, yeah. especially with something like vitamins. Come on. Like, it's such so subjective but yeah. so i get to seattle right and like i'm a born again virgin and i like was single and just like oh yes i'm a good christian woman like i commit my life to god uh -huh. <laughs> um and i was working several jobs I was working like a day job and then like this organization had a lot of functions like in the evenings at nighttime you had to like try to approach like five people a day called like drop the message and try to get all these people recruited on a daily basis and i was working at a winery on the weekends i was wine is really big in the uh, state of washington um, and it was Christmas Eve and I meet this guy, sweeps me off my feet, he happened to be military. I think that's where I my military trauma started, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but he like swept me off my feet and like, he, he, he still to this day has no idea that I was in this organization and he caused me a lot of trauma. I'm not, I'm not, I'll be real, but if I hadn't met him, he is the one that kind of helped me separate away from this organization that was like very toxic for me to be in. Just um, by hanging out with him, you realized. Yeah. Cause I prioritized mm -hmm. like time with him versus like going to mm -hmm. like organizational functions and all that and so, so what do they do when you stop showing up oh god thing? yeah so I, t I i initially like so before i met this guy on this like christmas eve i confessed to my um mentor that i watched porn oh my god <laughs> this was a whole thing they're like oh my gosh like cammy you need to like confess your sins like we like we just like prayed over each other and it was it was a weird very weird thing so then when i met this guy and obviously go out on the date with this guy later on this was like over the holidays january and um we sleep together and then i'm like Fuck, i need to tell my mentor that was a whole fucking thing like he like basically like my mentor was like oh my gosh cammy you're a sex addict you need to get help i'm like i had sex once in eight months <laughs> sex <addict>. jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> wow so he sent me to this um therapy this therapist which i think was a total like not even a real therapist not even licensed or anything it was just some like christian woman trying to do like slut conversion therapy on Whoa. me <laughs> look at how good it worked i know it yeah. worked so well <laughs> she tried to have me recite every, every like this fake therapist tried to have me recite every name that i've ever slept with and after like seven people i'm like it's somewhere between seven and seven thousand i have no idea how many people i slept with i'm so sorry this is before porn yeah <laughs> seven thousand what do you think your number actually was ah uh, somewhere like 50 to 70 okay i think i was like 23 at the time yeah. So you were putting in work. I was putting in work. Yeah. yeah. Maybe less than that. I don't know. But <laughs> so like it clearly doesn't work. And I'm like, this is like crazy. Like this feels weird. Like this is not vibing with me. Like I grew up spiritual, but not like really yeah. hardcore Catholic. I'm like, this doesn't feel right. 